Now, steps two to five can basically be subsumed into the same thing. So if you look at them, it's recognize the tax expense that relates to increases in taxable temporary differences. Recognize the tax expense that relates to increase in deductible temporary differences. Recognize tax expense that relates to a decrease in taxable temporary differences and recognize the tax expense that relates to decrease in deductible temporary differences. Look, that all is dealing with the same thing, which is basically, let's look at our carrying values, let's look at our tax base, work out the temporary difference and work out what we do with it. Um, the process is exactly the same. As we go through it, we need to figure out if we've got a, defer if we've got a deductible or taxable, but apart from that, we're all, we're all pretty sweet. So back to the document reader. And what we have here is, What we have here is an act extract from the balance sheet. We've got various assets, various liabilities. If you were in an exam, and I should have made that clear in the first one, if an exam for the profit section, if you're looking at the extract from the statement of comprehensive income, you're not going to get that tax column. Like that wouldn't exist. You'd have to, if you had to do something, you might have to calculate that out. With an extract of statement from a financial position, you're not going to get the tax base column. I mean, you might get the column, but you're not going to get the amounts in it or the temporary differences. This is what you need to do. So we've got cash, inventory, accounts receivable, prepaid insurance, plant um, with accumulated depreciation, and then we've got payables, warranty expense, long service leave expense, and a loan payable. And what your task would be is to work out the tax base for each of them. Now, so I have, okay, so if we look at the assets first, if, we, if you have a look back on your slides, the tax base of an asset is the amount that will be deductible for tax purposes. Um, cash. I mean, cash and inventory, there, we don't deal, we don't, we're never going to see differences with what we deal with, so we can kind of ignore them. And you're going to get used as you practice through this things that you need to deal with. Um, accounts receivable, if you've had, I mean, generally, you're going to get taxed um, if you have a look at that a deduction for tax purposes. I mean, account receivable, you're not going to get deductions for using that, so that gets got rid of. I mean, the only tax effect of accounts receivable would be the affiliated sales revenue, which has happened, um, but that's not what we're looking at here. Prepaid insurance. Even though we've got $5,000 of prepaid insurance sitting there, um, The tax base of uh, should have a look at the tax base of an asset is the amount that will be deductible for tax purposes against any benefits that are coming out. Um, if those benefits will not be taxable, taxable, the tax base of an asset is equal to its carrying amount. Um, so with prepaid insurance, if we think about what's going on here, for, and how much was the insurance that we looked at? Um, Can you see this? Yeah, okay. Got a prepaid debit cash. Uh, that's 35. 
Where is it? And this is kind of what I was talking about where sometimes it's good just to think about what the tax base is, is kind of like a balance sheet for tax purposes. So with the accounting side of things, when we have that, we debit prepaid, when we pay it, we credit cash $40,000. With the expense side of things, we debit insurance expense 35 and we credit, pre and we credit prepaid 35, leaving us a prepaid of 35, um, prepaid of 5,000 and an expense of 35,000. But if we flip around to, okay, let's think about how this would have worked if we'd had tax rules for this. It's almost like debit insurance deduction, 40,000, credit cash, 40,000. The prepaid doesn't exist in that case and the deduction total, which we know which we've seen before, is 40,000. Which picks up, there is a, there is a temporary, di well there's gonna be a temporary difference because we have a tax base of zero because with accounting we know we end up with an asset value of 5,000. From a tax point of view, it's almost like we end up with an asset value of nothing because we've already had those deductions take place. Now. Where is it? And I'll come back to talk about the temporary differences when we get to that point. Uh, the plant, we've already talked a fair bit about property plant equipment. We use that as it, an example. Um, that's quite small. So plant at cost was 600,000. That's the same regardless for these two. Accumulated depreciation was 120. We worked that out before. Accumulated depreciation was 150. Plant, for an asset point of view, is carrying at 480. Plant, for a tax point of view, is carrying at 450. Um, and we'll have a look at the temporary differences in a second. For liabilities, when we roll down to liabilities, it's, if we look at, we'll start at loan payable just because that's an easy one, and accounts payable kind of fit the same bill. With loan payable, you don't get a deduction for paying back debt. So if I borrowed money from you guys and I pay it back, I don't get a deduction for just giving you back the loan amount. I would get a deduction for paying interest on the loan. So that's a separate thing. But just giving you back, lending you back money or giving you back the money that you've lent me, I don't get a, get a deduction for that. And you can imagine why that'd be the case. If I could get deductions based on just paying back principal amounts, people would just be borrowing money and just paying it back straight away all over the place because they get deductions for that. So it actually doesn't make a lot of sense. So, because um, remember you start with the carrying value, take away whatever's deductible. So loan payable and accounts payable, we don't worry about them. For provision for warranty expense, we start with the 35 and we take away the $35,000 which will be deductible in the future because that's what you will get some sort of, they're estimating that you will pay out warranties of 35,000, gives you zero. Same for provision for long service leave expense, we've got 30, we take away that future deduction, gives you zero. So we've gone the same process for those two and we end up with a tax base of zero in both cases. Now what we've ended up with is and I'll, oh, while we're down the bottom, I'll start with liabilities. What we've ended up with is a carrying value which is greater than the tax base for provision for warranty expense, and we've got a carrying value greater than the tax base for provision for long service leave expense. Um, for liabilities, when the carrying value is greater than the tax base, what you're gonna end up with is deductible temporary differences and that, sorry, and that will give rise to DTAs. So these ones are deductible. Um, 
and they will ultimately, that's not the DTA amount, but they will ultimately give rise to DTAs. If we look at the asset side of things, the 480 and 450, Four eighty is greater than four fifty, and five thousand is bigger than that. So those are going to those are both the same way. And what we end up with is taxable temporary differences, and these will ultimately give rise to DTLs. Um, now, as I was saying before, I don't think, and again, I, there may be a case where I'm proven wrong. I don't think you're ever going to see a situation where a liability doesn't give rise to a DTA. Um, so you can, if you forget which way it's meant to go, if you worked out the temporary differences, you can be pretty much sure a DTA, uh, liability is going to give rise to a DTA. And then you can work out based on comparing these signs with what you're going on up here, this is obviously going to be reversed. So if these are all signed the same way, that's got to be the opposite way around. So when a carrying value is greater than the tax base for an asset, you end up with a DTL. So we've worked through how to come up with the various amounts on this page. Now, using that, you could do them individual line item by line item. Um, you could do them, there's actually a number of ways you could do this. And so we'll start with this one and show you different ways. So in terms of the DTAs, we've got 65,000. 65,000 times by 30% gives you 19,500. I'll talk about this in a moment. 10,500 is the 35,000 times by 30%. And so that's... So what we've calculated out is, we've a, I've actually jumped a step inadvertently, but we shall talk about that. We've calculated out 19,500 of DTA and 10,500 of DTL. So that's what, all of that stuff on the previous page, that's what we've ended up with. Now the question then is, how do we actually put that into the financial statements? And the first thing we should have taken note is on the very top of the page is that this is the first financial statements for this company, which means the balance of DTAs and DTLs for this company at the start of the year was zero. So we're not starting with a balance sitting there, we're starting at a zero balance. What we've calculated out here, the 19,500 and the 10,500, what we've calculated there is the level of the DTA and DTL at the end of the first of that first year. So what this entry here is, is actually going from zero to 19,500 and zero to 10,500. If we were to go next year and we would end up at 30,000, we would just look at that difference and that's 10,500 for DTA. So we're only picking up in the entry here the change amount, which is going from zero to 19,500 and zero to 10,500. Now, if you want to do this as debit DTA 19,500, credit income tax expense 19,500, debit income tax expense 9,000, credit deferred tax, sorry, debit income tax expense 10,500, credit deferred tax liability 10,500. So just do the DTAs separately and then the do, do the DTLs separately. You can do that. Um, you can join them up like what we've done here. Christ, you could even do them every single line item which has got a difference and do them individually if you wanted to. Um, but ultimately what we end up with, however you do that, is a net income tax expense because of the deferrals of, of a credit of $9,000. That's ultimately, regardless of how you do that, that's what you're going to end up with. 
the other question though, and this is an important one, is, and it's on your slides, but I'm not going to flip back just to look at this one um, and get to it. <coughs> 